Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm in Monrovia, California at Mold Life US. And Brandon's gonna come out here and give us a crash course in mold making and casting. <laughs> this is gonna be cool. Actually, this is really exciting because one of the things that got me going on prop making was like Tom Savini's book, Bizarro, which later became Red Delusions. Mm -hmm. And I've enjoyed mold making in the past. You're actually distributing mold making products, right? Correct from uh, novice materials all the way up to uh, advanced materials, which, you know, I feel like a lot of people should work their way up to. Sure. But today we're gonna we're gonna do it, crash course into it so that uh, everyone can understand it and you can do this at home. And we're using materials that are safe. So you can actually do it in your apartment if you get accidentally get some things on your hands, like certain silicones, they're platinum based. It's a little bit better than some of the tin based silicones. Oh. I don't recommend it, we should still wear gloves. For safety reasons, but it's right. uh, it's still nice. So it's not like preschool non-toxic, but this isn't yes. gonna like kill your parakeet in your apartment toxic. Yes, it's not gonna have come any permanent damage. Okay, cool. I asked you to bring a copy of your life cast. Right. But we're gonna actually make a corrective positive where we're gonna take his cast and actually clean it up a little bit, offset a little bit, pull the neck down so that you have one full piece. And then oh, okay. later on, after that, you can take make multiple copies out of this mold, and you can have multiple sculpts of the pieces on there. So we're gonna clean this up. Since you did it in HydroCal, we wanna do it a little bit softer, but we wanna just, and you don't wanna hit it too much. You're just cleaning up that edge so it's just a smoother line, because we're gonna lay this in a bed of clay. I like using Lazy Susans. Do that, right? So when we're cleaning it up, when we have to fill in clay into these regions here, because you know you had your stone here, but obviously right. that's not touching. So we're gonna go and clean that up. Because you gotta remember, this is gonna be a clay cover. Right. Think of it as like a blanket of clay, right? With some keys and things like that. A key going around the edge. And then you have to put your jacket on, so you're gonna have to have, make sure you have space all around. And we're gonna be drilling into this later. Okay. And doing multiple steps. Oh, yeah, okay. So, what is this? I'm gonna show you how to make a clay cutting board. It's a simple, just a couple paint sticks, piece of wood. Okay. And uh, you're gonna put your water-based clay on there, and you're gonna take a, a wire and you cut it. So it's the same cut every time, the same thickness. That should be fine for now. We'll make some more afterwards. This is water-based clay. It's gonna start drying out. Right. Take a paint stick and it's a simple makeup spatula. Right, so this has no edge on it, it's just a thin piece of metal. Yeah, thin piece of metal. All right. Isn't that beautiful? So I can go in and just add that in. Now I'm putting it a little back. Okay. So that when I, and then pressing this down onto the wood, so that when I put another piece on, this is also the same way we'll make keys later. Okay. You want to make sure you can get as much of your natural shape as possible. We continued adding strips of clay, filling in the voids between the life cast and the wood until we corrected all the holes, fixed the neckline, and made a full positive shape. And when it was done, Brandon sealed everything with a clear coat spray. And so now we're going to put aluminum foil over it. You can use plastic wrap or aluminum foil. I just and both are, whatever's readily available, as long as you're building a layer so that it can cover it up so when we put clay on it, later on we peel it off, it's just nice and clean. It's nice and clean. Okay, cool. And so the, then the clay is gonna represent what the silicon's gonna be. Yeah, once we, over that. Well, yeah we're gonna put a jacket on top of that. We're gonna put a, a dividing wall, just like here in the Gorilla cast. It's a good dividing wall so that you can like open it up and then peel the silicone off Oh, okay. once so, it's finished. So it's not just stacked like yeah. empty cups or it's gonna come apart. So it's not one big giant silicone sleeve, because over time silicone will warp and stuff and this will help keep its shape, the jacket. Let's do that. All right. Doesn't have to be super pretty, but it has to be enough to just coat it, you know? Brandon had cut more layers of clay, which we placed over the life cast. We are careful to not only keep the thickness of clay consistent over the whole thing, but to keep everything smooth so the silicone would be easy to remove from the mold. Yeah, it turned out good. Um, now we're gonna put keys on it so that uh, silicone has, can grab to the jacket. Otherwise, this would just move around because it doesn't have anything to lock into. Right. You gotta put keys around the bottom 
So we're gonna go like this. We continue to add keys over the face. The more keys is the less chance of the mold slipping and having a warped casting. So you put another three coats of clear coat on it. Yeah, which seals up the clay, which allows us to uh, now put the shim stock in right down the center. Okay, and the shim stock will keep the two halves of the outer shell from yeah, bonding to each other. Correct. And is that's, that all the pieces? That's, I have one left. Oh, wow. Now we tape it up so that it fits a little bit nicer. Okay. What, just packing tape or masking tape? Or? Actually use a metallic. So we need a heater tape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That looks good. I like it. You like it? Okay. For the outer shell, we could use more stone or fiberglass, but instead he has something stronger and lighter. F1 carbon paste. Super lightweight, extremely strong. It's an epoxy-like putty mixed with carbon fiber strands. And this is actually used on Formula One race cars for the body shell. We just mix it with the activator and press it on kind of like a paper mache. And it doesn't need to be very thick, which also keeps it lighter. But we do need to wait for it to cure. So a little while ago, we started doing the matrix mold and you were showing me how to put the clay on it and we, we built up the outer shell, but you've done something to this. Yeah, I actually cleaned it up, took it apart. I took out your life cast, and it was all clayed up and things like that. And that's what we started with. Okay. So I took it apart. We had the metal shim down the middle. Right. right. And before I took everything apart, I had to mark everything. There was your life cast. Right, okay. And then this is where the plaster piece was and the clay. Okay. And that clay buck that was to brown off the neck more. This is the uh, where the clay was. Oh, okay. So we built up all the shapes, and then we put all the keys on it. And then this, this outer, it's like a tree, so there's layers. Right. This outer layer is this. It's the jacket. It was just the F1 carbon paste. Right, but this thing is very lightweight for the size it is. Yeah, but if you look, there's little markers so I can line everything back up, and it's, I actually did different designs, like there's a triangle there, there's three lines here. So now it's mounted to the board and all that fun stuff and I took all the clay out. Now there's a negative form where it's just your life cast. Right. And then negative space because I took out, I to removed remove the clay. All the clay. So it's the open space that was the clay and yeah. you put the carbon fiber back on top of it. I put the jacket back on top. So it's lined up on the board. It's closed up here. There's multiple holes here so that you want to make sure it's the most perfect seal. Okay. You don't want silicone to leak out. Right. Before I put the jacket back on, I actually drilled holes inside the jacket to for little bleeders. Now, okay. these bleeders, are when I pour the silicone on the inside, it starts bleeding out, it's pushing the air out. Okay. So that I know each level that it's fully filled. So that when I did this, I, And I, then there's a I, hole on this side that's empty. Yeah, so when I, uh, the silicone starts like pouring out, it, it would fill up and then all of a sudden I would just go and plug it. Okay. That's it, it would just stop. You want it to come out a little bit. Right, because you want to make sure you've got the yeah, air out. Yeah, and then it just, when it reaches the top, and then I built a little foam core wall, but I wanted pure volume because I used a silicone that sets in 25 minutes. It was poured up and ready to go within an hour. So I chopped that off and I cleaned up all the little bleeder holes because there was actually like little, like little nipples. Well, yeah. And so I, you take it and you pull the nipple and you slice it. Mm. Uh-huh, yeah. all right. <laughs> but you always want to pull it because it, it, when you slice it, it sits back in more. Okay. So it doesn't have like a little... So it won't deform the mold by... It'll, gonna, it'll, it'll make a depression yeah, if it doesn't line up the hole. It. Exactly. Okay. I ran the piece on the inside. I haven't, I left it in there. Right. I wanted to see your reaction. I want to see, make sure. Okay. Because there's, there's also mistakes, let's, let's be honest. If I didn't seat the jacket perfectly, it's gonna Deforming. be, it's gonna deform. Okay, so it's just removing wing nuts. Yeah, these don't have the washers on them right now, but mo most of the time I recommend putting washers. And here's the uh, the best part, because it was already, the, when I was taking it apart originally, there was a perfect suction and things like that. It was, the silicone was in there perfectly. Plus it had all the little keys that yeah. I made from that. So, do you want to pull it apart? Oh, sure. You just take so how it apart. much? It's, and there's hardly any. No, there's no, and this doesn't weigh anything at all. No, it's hardly anything. And you could see like all the little holes I drilled, plus uh, the, the edges that I softened so that uh, there was no interference of the silicone touching. And the silicone picks up everything. And again, just like that. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything at all. Yeah. Here's the best part. When you want to remove a piece, you start. You hear it? Yeah. And that's just releasing the seal. 
This is the first copy out of it. Now the mold was a little dirty because of the live cast and things like that, but I ran it just to pull all that stuff out. Okay. It catches everything and it pulls it out. So we're gonna right. see it in the cast. Okay, so this is this is the first, you're saying this, this is the is first This is literally cast. The, the first casting from it. And then I'll make a master copy so I can make duplicates. <laughs> How many heads of mine do you need? <laughs> well, that's the thing is like, uh, now if I wanna re-pour the mold, pull it up nice and slow. Okay. Because now it's, it's just formed a, there's a release in there, but you don't wanna, it's getting, it's getting all the poured texture and all that stuff. And it's slowly. Those. Yep. And your eye sockets are actually perfect keys. Oh, yeah. I'm glad my eyes are good for something. <laughs> and here's the other side, which you can literally see the, the black disappear. Right. That was actually a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Watch your finger. Okay. Here's your life, guys. Here's your, an exact duplicate of your head. I like the fact there's still burlap texture. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you gave me the coffee, it had, it had burlap, burlap in it because I pushed it in too deep. Yeah, and or you can actually make it feel, too it, feel it in the mold. You and feel that's it? your negative. Okay. That's 160 ounces of silicone. Really? Yeah. How I determined that is the volume of silicone was the volume of clay. I took a bucket, okay. I pressed all the clay into the bucket, and then I added a little bit more silicone. And that's the. Oh because you're compensating for volume, so it's right. the, what negative space, where you want to push it all in there. Right. And then that's it, and then I take it out. It's, the weight's gonna be a little different because silicone's different than clay, right. but it's based on the volume. But I added extra silicone because I had to pour up the top, but then I had a general idea, and I, the waste, I think, is a fraction of what it was. Because of you. Because I knowing it ahead of time, yeah. That's really cool, that is really cool. I have not seen a matrix mold before. Isn't that amazing? This is, it's holding its shape right now. <laughs> But you want to put it back into its jacket. Right. All right. You can have that. Oh, thank you. You know, you got a little copy of your face. And I still have that copy of my face. So we want to say thank you to Brandon and to Mold Life for having me visit and showing me how he makes a matrix mold, which is probably one of the more complex molds you might want to do. Mold Life is offering us a 15% discount. Well, it's offering to all of you. Just use the coupon code ODUMAKES15 at moldlifeusa.com. Now I have more Mold Life videos coming up. We do some silicone casting and some resin casting because it's actually a lot of fun to try new things because this is how Odin makes. Not every day I get a, an Odin in my shop. <laughs> well, okay, <here> thank you. <laughs> I'd like to personally thank Brandon Gilbo of Gilbo FX and all of my Patreon supporters. You guys really do make this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.